Okay, but that's great and applaud unless you have a game or something and you have to be here, which may be a special uh, special dispensation. Um, I, I've probably said this before, but you only get excused for games if you win. Um, <laughs> Not to put any pressure on, but because some of you are good well, um, others stressful. Oh, I can split. Never mind. Um, it's not real. All right. Why? Why? Uh, why are statistics important? You probably know already. But so I'm in the mail room, and a couple of my colleagues are laughing about their spouses who are concerned about things like dying on airplanes and Ebola. And those things are relatively low risk. And things like the flu are relatively high risk. Um, and you know, if you're worried about the flu, just go get a flu vaccine. How many of you believe that? How how effective is the flu vaccine? What? It, well, you, you had no idea, right? Your doctors and and the and. And, and the assumption is you get a flu vaccine and you're not going to get the flu, right? No, right? The flu vaccine is so that you can have a nice relationship with your doctor, so you can be first in line to get Tamiflu, which does work, but it's three hundred dead dollars pop instead of free, right? Anybody taken an economics class? If it's free, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I just thought, you know, and they were, and I'm like, well, okay, and I tried to explain, well, conditionally, your wives are in their 30s, and the chances of them dying, and they don't have COPD, uh, they don't have ovarian cancer, they don't have AIDS, so the chances of them dying of the flu is zero, but if they got Ebola, they would certainly die, so they're, um, and then the, and then it's like, well, for plane crashes, you know, it's, it's safer driving, it's like, yeah, but you're not driving the plane. And then you have to look at how many people die from eating airline flu food. And it's a lot higher than you think. But so I thought, right, if crashing is not the only way you die on an airline. How many of you have been really, really sick after flying someplace and eating airline food? How many of you just don't eat the airline food? All right, it's really bad, but it is a, it is a killer. Um, but the CDC has no idea how many people die on the flu. And if you go to their flu view page and read, they'll say, we sort of make this stuff up and we do so in a quantitatively sophisticated way because we don't actually measure or collect data on how many people die of the flu. Um, but um, they do sort of make some, what they know how many babies die of the flu. It's about 100 a year. So their estimates of it's somewhere between 3,000 and 120,000 if you read this stuff are pretty whacked. Um, but vaccine effectiveness, they actually test and they so who is who is who is told they must go get the flu vaccine? The most old people, right? You walk into any CVS and it's like, if you're old, the flu is going to kill you. <laughs> so you better take the flu vaccine, because in fact, the only people the flu kills are little babies, and not very many old people, uh, who are somewhere between 75 and 85 percent of people who die of the flu. If you die of the flu and you're over 85, <laughs> um, I don't mean to be harsh, but it was the being 85 part. <laughs> Just saying. Um, if you're over 65, that 95% credibility interval, we'll get to why that's different than a confidence interval, is somewhere be around 41, but it's somewhere between 4 and 64. <laughs> Reasonably, there's a pretty high likelihood it doesn't work or squat, right? Because <laughs> you're old, right? <laughs> and I know what you mean, but that's the reality. And so when we talk about probabilities, be careful about stories when people talk about general probabilities when the per people's fears are always conditional probability, right? Your chances of having a serious concussion raise your hand if you have a high chance of having a serious concussion in this class. Come on, get it up there. Yeah, bicyclists, come on, get them up there. Well, we wear helmets, right? But those helmets, right, they just make it so the road rash has a really neat chin strap mark on it, right? So um, it's been shown that helmets may not protect against concussions. 
not steady may not be very good. All right, so we're going to work towards, uh, and we'll get it more into conditional probability. The stats are all around us, and they're often um, misused or misunderstood. But it could be as high as 64. All right, it is, it is confidence intervals or credibility intervals that are huge like that that should scare you. That means we don't know. Okay. In fact, if we did a 99% credibility interval, it c could be the vaccine's killing you. Um, right, because it would go into the negative, which means the vaccine's killing you. So you got to be a little skeptical. <clears throat> and, but not that the people at the CDC aren't well paid and know their stuff, it's just that it's hard. All right, so let's, how many people have downloaded VenSim and have it installed and ready to go? How many people have not downloaded VenSim? All right. Please do a search on VenSim, PLE, and you'll see something that says free. If you do put the PLE part, you'll see free downloads, VenSim. to download the PLE 7.0 and you want to download the version that's for yours. If you don't want to subscribe, uncheck the sub subscribe. All right. You have to put in an email address because it will send you a link to where to download it. Please go and download it. Which purpose are you Educational. All right, and then you'll have to go to your mail and it will send you a link that looks something like that. Successfully downloaded it? How many no's? Raise your hand if the answer is no. Is it in process? Yes. <laughs> okay. about the midterm yet? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, how much is the midterm worth? <coughs> what? I don't you know, it's 5%. And if you do badly, you get to take it over? Yeah, and when do we take it? When I think you're ready. All right, so it's one of those things that don't stress about it, all right, because I know I'm going to start getting questions about the midterms soon. So I'm trying to prevent you spending your time going, there's something I really need to do, but I'm going to email Dr. Kelly about the midterm instead of working on whatever it is that's due. It's called frittering. I'm good at it. How many of you clean when you have something due? Awesome. How's the download coming? Done? Anybody not done? Are we on like a two minute or? 
Downloaded? Anybody not have it downloaded? Pardon? Yeah, I have to change my security stuff. Okay. Alright, in the setup process, the only thing I really have to warn you about is install PLE for academic, public research, or personal use. Don't install it for evaluation purposes. Otherwise, it becomes a real pain in the butt. And then, How's the install going? Raise your hand if it's installed. Okay, raise your hand if it's not installed. Okay, almost there.
We good? No, but you can get lost. No, how close is it to you? My computer just straddles and it's in the Is this one? It straddles in the Okay, sure. Sure. All right, so we'll and I'll talk our way through this. So we have a, what we're going to do is we're going to build some box model. We're eventually going to get to an SEIR model, um, but we're going to build a, a, a simple, uh, a couple simple population models, and then we're going to get all the way to a predator prey model, uh, and then you will um, you will use a modified version of the predator prey in your T Rex uh, if you choose to have the T-Rex eat prey. Uh, it's one of the things that uh, when you decide to do animal reserves, like if you decide to do a crocodile park, <laughs> a cricket one, what do you want? If you want predator prey, what can your crocodiles eat? People, right? That's not allowed. Stray dogs, no, that's... Uh, <laughs> That was a good idea, but the animal rights activists thought that the dog should, you know, be mangy, die long, slow, painful deaths, and start walking on the street. Um, versus the quick death being you know, eaten by crocodiles. It's it's hard. It's hard when you work with these things. All right. So um, yeah. So we you end up buying fish. <laughs> what? No, no, no. We, that, that, yeah, that actually goes really poorly. Um, but, but it ends up being a lot of uh, bad beef, um, which now can no longer be sold. So you can now buy it as fish. Um, all right. So we have this. We have a couple of different types of variables here. We're mostly going to play up here with this type of variables, and we're not going to use causes and other stuff like that. That's a little advanced. We have a level variable here, and this is for things like population, things that move up and down and have a state. They're also called state variables. Then we have just standard variables, which are um, just coefficients that we want to stick in. We could call them coefficients on a byte. And then we have rate variables, which are the variables as they plug into our level variables. And when we do our explosive population dynamic model, also known as an exponential, um, it'll become relatively clear. We're going to do that by clicking on the level variable and then clicking out here somewhere in the middle and we'll call this bunnies. Bunny. Alright? And then we're going to take a rate variable and we're going to click outside of it and then we're going to go all the way to the box and click in and we're going to call that birds. And then we're going to click once in it, and once outside of that, and we'll call it Bunny Heaven. And we're going to keep it light today, it's a heavy day. I'm sorry. Because, hey, who knows where Bunny is going? Yeah. Not very often. But he's smart enough to stay away from the actual water. Dogs, not as much. <coughs> Children from New Jersey and Florida? Um, all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put in some parameter variables. And we're going to go, we're going to click the A. We're going to come up here, we're going to do birth rate. I don't have. Yeah, it's a T. It's still called a, a max. It's a max. It's called it's a T. I have no, no idea why they use different letters in the different versions, but they're different programming teams. So we have birth rate, and then over here we'll have Nirvana rate. Don't you miss Kurt Cobain? What? What? Ooh. <laughs> How quickly the stars move down. All right. All 
All right, are we here? Is there anybody who's not here? Because this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing. Now we're going to use the arrow to connect everything, and we're going to connect birth rate. We're going to click on it once, and then right here into the little hourglass shaped thingy. And we're going to click there, and it should turn blue. We're going to click on Nirvana rate, and buddy have it. accurate on this. We color all over the lines here. We don't try to hit the uh, hitting edges. Say yes if you want to save the automated sketch because then if it crashes. All right. Now with the arrow still selected, we're going to click once inside of bunnies, once outside of bunnies, and once in our little hourglass. We're going to do that again once in inside of bunnies, once outside of bunnies, and once on bunny heaven. go through and we are going to set some parameters. And there's nothing magic about the ones that I'm going to set up here. All right, but there is a carefulness that's required. So go to equations and we're going to click on birth rate. And we're going to start off, it bounces here into what our base birth rate is. And we're going to do 0.5. And the min bunnies that is zero, and the max is, we're just going to say two. Just, and this is going to create a slider for us that we can move back and forth, and our increment's going to be 0 0.01, and all that does is allow us to do uh, a fine slider. And we're going to say okay, and the black goes away. 
All right? Do you want me to pop that back up? The min is zero, the max is two, the increment is 0 0.01, and we start off at 0 0.5. So every other money has a baby. Assuming equal sex ratios. The money is around the same Uh Yeah, it depends on where you are. <coughs> These are pets and rabbits are food. <laughs> I had a girlfriend, a very long time girlfriend, and we were into rabbits. Her name was Leslie. She decided to name the bunnies. I said, they're not bunnies, they're rabbits. And she said, what? I said, you don't name rabbits. And then one day she came storming in the house. And I said, don't look in the freezer. He <laughs> did not date much longer. Um, yeah, they were, yeah, to her, they were money. Yeah, it was bad news. Um, yeah, all right. So, okay, everybody got that? And now we're going to go to births. And this is going to be birth rate times bunnies. Because that's how many birds you get. We're going to say okay. Now we're going to go to Bunny Heaven, and that's going to be Bunnies times Nirvana rate. Okay. Then let's do Nirvana rate. Yeah. Zero and two. Point zero one, so it would be slow. And our death rate, our min is going to be zero, and our max is going to be one because you can only die once. Whoa, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it means Yodo. <laughs> or as I say when I'm in India, you only die once this time. <laughs> they do look funny when you say that. And we're going to do 0 0.01 so it's a smooth slider as well. And we're going to start off with 0.5. And we're going to say okay. So our nirvana rate is 0.5, minimum of 0, maximum of 1, increment 0 0.01, and OK. Yes? What's the equation for births? Birth rate times bunnies. And then bunnies is births <coughs> times those that go to bunny heaven, and that's all we need. And OK. And close. But it still is black because I forgot to put an initial value on. So we're going to start off with 20 bunnies. It's like Australia. Shipwrecks, 20 bunnies get off. Can we look at bunny heaven? Bunnies times nirvana rate or death rate or whatever you call it. What? You sorry? Okay, let me see what you've got.
The bunnies in, in the in the box is what's in there, which is births minus bunny heaven or deaths. Okay. Births minus deaths. And is there an initial value? And the initial value is 20. Because if you set it higher than that, and it, it gets explosive and goes to infinity. All right. Yes. For the difference between like how to issue initial value box and twenty, or twenty. Oh, the initial value just zero. No, no, that's twenty. Because your equation is up there. So that's twenty. And yeah, I know Vincent has fonts that are up to his Birth rates, the birth rates,
Everybody please save your drawings. Now click control panel, please, which is way over to the right. And we're going to create a new graph. We're going to click over on the graphs tab. And then down here there's a button that says new. Control panel, graphs, new. And we'll call this bunny pop. and the title can be the same. And the x-axis. We're going to select is going to be time and OK. That SEL means select. So on the x-axis, <coughs> SEL is select. And then we're going to put a Y variable, and these are down here. So we're going to click Select, and we want bunnies. Okay. Yes. Can you do it again, please? Yes. All right. Control panel. Click on graphs. <coughs> Click on new. <coughs> okay, I fill out a name and a title. I click select for the x-axis and select time. Good. And then OK. And then I come down here and I select bunnies. And OK. And then OK. And then close. All right. Are we good? <laughs> Now we're going to click on I.O. object, which means input output object, and we're going to click somewhere in the free space. And we're going to select custom output graph, and down here we're going to grab our bunny population. Custom output graph, there's a drop down down here, we're going to select the graph that we just made, and we're going to say OK. I'm going to make mine a little smaller so it's not in the way. And it's not going to show us anything because we have not yet run our simulation. Yeah. 
of mean foxes that are killing bunnies, so we catch them up, we catch them all and train them to be vegetarians. And so the nirvana rate slows down. So we're going to slide that to the left. All I did was grab though where it says 0.50 and slide it to 0.45. But we wanted that half as much. Can you do that again? What? How to slide it? Yes. Just, you see where it says the bottom rate? Do you see one? Do you, see, do you have sliders on your bottom rate? No? Yeah. Yeah. Grab it and drag it. I can't drag it. Yeah, I hate slide pads. Yeah, it's like two fingers and stand on one foot. All right. So now we have done our first dynamic simulation model. Ooh. Ooh. Have one more checkbox on your resume. I'm back <laughs> 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 Yes. That's sort of reproducing 25 per unit per period. It's sort of bacterial. Bunnies might be able to. Yeah, just go and change your birth rate to something lower than you have it in. Like change this. Just close that. 
go to your equation, go to your equation, and click on your birth rate. Go to the edge. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Don't be careful. I think I said this before. Now click outside. Alright? Go to the edge and it kills you. And that is death. Alright.
Are we so we're gonna go ahead and stop our simulation? We're gonna go ahead and grab our hand and we're gonna move our graph up and out here. Now we're gonna add another. Go to level. It used to be called box, but now they have levels. So we're going to click on level, and we're going to come down here. And these are going to be feral dogs. Feral dogs. Yep. You can spell PHQ1. <laughs> Alright, and it's going to look a whole lot like the bunnies. It's going to have a birth, but we'll call this dog birth. once out, and we'll call it dog death.
because dogs have a good life. They don't need pain. All right. Please click File and Save As. And we're going to call this Bunnies versus Dogs. One in, one out. Okay. We're going to take an arrow from Bunny Heaven to Dog Birds. Because you don't eat, you don't breed. take feral dogs to the population and we're going to hook that to Bunny Heaven. Our Nirvana rate is now instead of death rate going to be a bunny per dog consumption rate. So it's going to have to get pretty small. Okay. And then we're going to add a variable out here, which we'll call dog. Um, we'll call it bunnies to dogs. Okay. And then we're going to connect that to our dog births. And we're going to connect our dogs to our dog bird. And our dogs to our dog deaths. top-down or bottom-up control model, those of you in conservation biology? Bottom-up. Thank you. Why? Uh, because the body is the population, so. Correct. How many of you have taken pop -bi or cons bio? Is that all that goes out of the test? Uh, I'm TA, and so I should probably remember yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was one that deserved everybody missed. Bottom up, lower. All right. Are we good yet? Everyone with me? All right, so we're going to add a variable out here, which is dog death rate is mandated by the universe because it's external. And, and we, we, yes, we normally, it would be more complicated than this, but, and you're thinking it gets more complicated than this. <coughs> it does. All right, so 
Is everybody with me? If not, third tier back row, are we there? Okay. So, um, so now our nirvana rate is actually a bunnies per dog eaten. And so now we're going to have to go parameterize this, so we're going to click our equations. And you notice that everywhere that we need to fix, so we're going to go to bunnies to heaven. So this one is bunnies times nirvana rate times feral dogs. And I missed the times there. I mean it's error. Times feral dogs and OK. times their water rate times feral dogs. All right. And okay. We're going to want to then change your water rate to some very, very small number like 0, 0, 0, 5. And then we're going to want to make our increment smaller than that. All right. If we, if we don't start off with really small conversion numbers, then it crashes. Or very small, and, and, and we can fix these. All right? And all right? Did I, did I actually change? Yeah. So we start off with small numbers. And I've got three zeros and a five. Five zeros and a one. So we're in this one, our min is zero. <coughs> our, pardon? Our max is let's do point two five and our increment is point zero zero one. And we'll start that off with Point zero one, which means you have to eat 100 bunnies to create a dog. That still may be too high, maybe not. And then it's going to be bunnies to dogs times bunnies to heaven times feral dogs. Dogs, fortunately, is still dog birth minus dog death. It stays simple, we like that. Oh, and we have to start off with an initial value. I'd start off with four. So then I'll need all the buddies immediately. That's still maybe too many. Dog deaths is just death rate times feral dogs. And our dog death rate is going to be zero and one and point zero one. I'm going to start off with point five. That may be too high. So I'm going to say. to dogs times bunny heaven times feral dogs. Okay. That's the number that get eaten. Right. 
and it's the only way they die. Because this is a prudent predator that eats the old and the sick. Versus us who we like to take things in the prime of their life. No hunter ever comes back going, wow, you see that sick old man got shot. <laughs> All right, so we are to the point here where we are going to sit before we add a graph, we're going to sit, sit it, and hope it runs. Does it run? Do, our dogs are dying too quickly. Let's reduce our dog death rate. Nine. All right. Is it did, did it work for people? It's like magic if this works the first time. But it, but it, if you get your death rate down to about 0.29, you see some wacky sort of craziness here in the dogs. All right. So let's go ahead and stop and create another graph for oh, we got I'm sorry, we have to go to control panel. New graph. This is gonna be dog pop. Our X axis is again gonna be time. Which if I was literate would know is after the S's. Alright, <laughs> it's just going to be feral dogs, and okay. And now we have a dog pop and we can close that, and we can go back to our I.O. object, custom graph, and add dog pop. Alright. And then we probably want to get our hand and resize it. Needing me to walk back through the creation of Dog Pop? Mm -hmm. What did you do after Alpha? Oh, um, I clicked close. Okay. IO object. Oh, output custom graph. I went down and I grabbed here and I grabbed a dog pop. Okay. Cancel. All right. see fairly quickly is that these populations are that these models are wildly unstable right if you move it you see it bouncing around you go crazy to infinity and back to zero and blah 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 well this is of course is what the early modelers found out back when they did this with math before we had nice easy ones and then that's led to some papers uh, Lee and I um, period three equals chaos suggesting maybe that what we saw out there is random wild fluctuations were in fact the outputs of dynamic models um, and we are uh, we're where we need to be right now. We will come back in on Thursday, do a couple of presentations, and then uh, we will talk about how to find parameters that make sense. But you all have a functioning predator-prey model, right? So we, does that make sense? Does every, how many people have their T-Rex animal that you've chosen? All right, we're going to go around just so, what do you got? Oh, right. Eastern fence lizard? Eastern fence lizard, that'll make matter happy. Um, anybody else? 
Blue crabs, all right. Vicious little creatures. It's really fun. I got this really cool thing that you can do. You stand on the shore when it's kind of shallow water and you, 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 hold, you hold the blue crab, you hold it by the, the sharp end, and then you stand there and you wave it in the water. Because when it does stress stuff, the little body head will come up and rip it right out of your hands. Really and if you're really brave, one of you will stand just over it in between the legs and you noodle for sharks as they come in. All right, who's next? What do you got? Kind of the side. Do we have decisions? Animals? Nope. Ants. Ants. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Starship Troopers, have you seen it? Oh yeah, one of the best films ever. Also one of the worst. <laughs> one of my professors, Lynn Geary, was one of the advisors for their model creature. He, he disappeared for about a year and a half. Anybody else? We're going to do slow lower suits. Oh, yeah, that's going to be boring. <laughs> every once, every five days, it'll reach down and eat a human. <laughs> and then sleep for five days. Lorises are very prudent in their food intake. Anybody else? All right. So I'll be honest, it's my Thursday that you really ought to have is your, your animal. It doesn't take that long to get through the SEIR model. And we're going to talk about scaling. And you'll have lots of questions about scaling. All right, because it's one of the harder things in the assignment. Once you get the, the predator prey model going, it's pretty easy. Except make stuff up. <laughs> Except your consumption rates and that sort of stuff need to come from the literature. So you have to know how much ants have to consume, right? You have to have a consumption rate for ants. I would use ants to eat other things, but if you're getting out there, nectar eating ants, you should have some large fields of nectar bearing plants. Um, right, so you need to scale. So have, have a creature. Anybody up there? Creatures yet? Confused about it? If you're confused, you can ask me. Yes. You were going to do a cockroach? Awesome. Men in Black, one of my favorites. <laughs> Not quite T-Rex size, but imagine. Um, actually, in the end, wasn't the last scene didn't sort of grow to T-Rex size? Yeah, that was um, All right. And remember, there are bonus points in this assignment for creativity. So you don't have to you don't have to be all scientific about this. Except on the scaling part, we're gonna have to be very scientific, but on the sort of got fun. Alright? I will see you all on Thursday.